Good evening. Thank you for joining me. My name is Mr Bartlett. I'm the head of Year 8 and welcome to our virtual Year 8 information evening. The aims of this presentation is to give you an overview of the year ahead for Year 8 students. Some of the things that I'll be talking through include the COVID-19 protocols that we have here at school, the curriculum including PSHE, how we report progress and how we support and reward our students, our expectations as a school, the pastoral support and well-being of the students in year eight and also communication between ourselves as a school and to you as parents. Firstly, I'd like to give you an overview of the year eight pastoral team and introduce them all to you. First of all, our form tutors. In 8C, we have Miss Cass. In 8O, we have Miss Watkins. In 8L, we have Mr Kibby. 8H has Mr Ulf, but who is also assisted by Mr Walsh. And 8E, Miss Yo, who is also assisted by Miss Thompson. Myself as the Year 8 leader, Mr Bartlett. Mrs Beaumont is our pastoral assistant. Dr Parrott, who is our vice principal at the school, but also the senior Year 8 link. And we have Mrs Jackson, who is the associate to the principal and CEO, but is also in charge of safeguarding. Our Senko is Mrs Daniels. Initially, I'd like you to talk you through the COVID-19 procedures and protocols we have on the school site. First of all, I'm sure you're all aware of the year group bubbles and that all students only mix with students in the same year group. We have installed a one-way system around the school site, which is um, in use by students as well as staff. There is limited movement between the classrooms and all year eight lessons are either in the same classrooms or very, very similar classrooms. Staggered timings are in place throughout the day, including lunch and end of day, with additional staff on duty to supervise at these times. We've made fo face masks compulsory to be worn around school and communal areas. They can be taken off during classroom um, lessons, but they can also be kept on if students wish to. We also recommend that personal sanitizer is used. However, there are plenty of sanitizing stations around the school site. Staff have been provided with full PPE and there has been time allocated to students in tutor time in PC lessons for students to discuss questions and any concerns that they potentially have, whether that be in regards to re-engagement with school life or anything that happened um, that, that concerned them during um, lockdown. All of these protocols and procedures are under constant review and given new guidance from the government. Okay, the overview of the Year 8 curriculum and examinations for this year. First of all, students will start their GCSE RE in the spring term um, of year eight for their exam to take place in June 2022, which is in the summer of year 10. That is the only change this year. All the, all the other subjects continue as key stage three courses. Latin is introduced as a new language in year eight. ICT will continue to study the national curriculum as well as the MOS qualifications. Creative and crit critical thinking and healthy living, which has also already started this term, which will be um, introduced on a rotation for students this year. That is alongside our continuing PC and core PE program. A date for your diary is that the year eight exam week is on uh, is in March um, of next year, the week beginning the 22nd to the 26th. On the next slide is an overview of the PC program in year eight. PC will continue to take place on a Monday, period three, and students will have that once a week. Students will recognise some of the topics from year seven, and it's an opportunity in year eight to discuss those topics and issues further and to explore a new learning. Some um, topics will be new to year eight and will probably reappear further down the school. Year eight is an opportunity um, to explore uh, the careers programme a little bit further, something which I'll explain a little bit more on the next slide.
as I mentioned, Year 8 will have an opportunity to explore um, careers at CCHSG a little bit further in Year 8. In the spring term, they'll have an opportunity to investigate different career opportunities and to consolidate their awareness of the myriad of opportunities ahead of them in their life. This is in preparation for and the build-up to choosing their GCSE exam subjects going into Key Stage 4 and how that will affect certain career pathways um, following on from school into the sixth form and then further education and employment beyond. The support network for the careers uh, pathways here at, here at school are, uh, are as follows. Firstly, Mrs Mandel is our um, careers lead. Mrs Key is our independent careers advisor who is available to book appointments with um, upon uh, request. And we also have a careers library and interactive ICT resources which students will have the opportunity to use um, in, mainly during PC lessons later on in the year. Something which I would like to highlight now is the Year 8 Tutor Group Mix at the end of the year. At the end of the year, students will be uh, mixed around into new tutor groups ready for the start of Year 9. Um, and there are a number of reasons why we do this. Firstly, as I mentioned, students um, at the end of this year will choose their GCC options and their courses that they would like to take forward into Key Stage 4. This means their their classes and their day-to-day -day classes will all be mixed of different students. So we take this opportunity to also mix the form groups. Um, this allows for an opportunity to mix with different students within the year group, um, something that we would like to encourage our students to do. Um, we also know that students, as they get older, will start to mix with other students from other tutor groups anyway. Um, so this is something that we try to actively encourage. Um, we've had a positive reaction um, from students who have been through this in, in previous years and we've also made changes to the process in response to those student concerns from previous years. Now, there's plenty of information that will, that will come with this and we're probably looking um, around May half term for that information to come out. But that is something that I just wanted to highlight now as kind of um, something to be aware of towards the end of the year. Something else to be aware of going into Year 9 is the Year 9 Matrix. The Year 9 Matrix is um, something that blends the transition between the Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 programme. Um, and the curriculum in Year 9 aims to be fluid, with an opportunity to explore different GCSE options if required. The Matrix consists of a flexible and balanced curriculum, the co-curriculum, STEM opportunities, trips and visits, optional instrument lessons and program enrichment days. The matrix provides opportunities for students to access subject areas that they may, non, may lo, no longer sorry, be formally studying as part of their GCC preferences. The enrichment days will focus on computer science, creative arts, geography, history, the environment, well-being and enterprise education. Some elements of that matrix will allow uh, students to have the opportunity to take additional qualifications. And this is to enhance a, a well-rounded um, curriculum and education. More information on this can be, can be uh, seen in the information booklet. Okay, the next couple of slides are just uh, going to be um, reminding you all of how we monitor and report progress here at CCHSG. Uh, the first slide there says um, in regards to the STEP system, and that's based on the reform curriculum um, assessment requirements in GCSE grades 9 to 1. So in year 8, therefore, we're expecting most students to be moving through 5 and then potentially into 6. Each of those steps are divided into sub-steps to give you an idea of where you're working at within that step. So for example, a point three would uh, suggest that you're working to walk towards the bottom of that step and a point nine is working towards the top of that step. The key dates for reporting progress in year eight can be found on page two of your information booklet and so that you're aware students will be receiving their year eight target grades 
next week. Our attitude to learning numbers have not changed from year seven. So a reminder that a one is outstanding and this is above and beyond what is expected of students in the classroom. Someone that really goes beyond and, and goes that extra step. A two is good and this is the ex expected level of all our students. A three and a four dips below that ex expectation and something of which is very, very likely to um, seek communication to parents regarding um, a three or a four. Um, but as I said, that hasn't changed from year seven. So hopefully that is just a gentle reminder. And again, our rewards haven't changed either. So still the the um, rewards of postcards, merit awards, certificates and letters, our e-newsletter to um, celebrate um, achievement, um, assemblies as and uh, sports awards and Jack Petchy awards. Those all things will still take place, maybe in a slightly different format as they would have been in normal circumstances, but still um, something that we would like to try and um, try and celebrate here at school. One thing I would like to mention, as you can see there, please tell me or please tell your form tutor if your daughter has achieved anything outside of school. Something that we don't get to hear very often and something that we're very proud to hear about when we do are students' achievements outside of school. And that is something that we'd certainly like to be able to celebrate with them. So please feel free to contact, like I say, our, your form tutor or myself um, to, to, let, to let us know if there has been an achievement outside of school. And we'd love to celebrate with you. One thing we do preach... Uh, all the way through from year 7 to, to year 13, in fact, is about good learning habits. That is something that we can practice and, and specialise in in school. That is also something that can be rehearsed and practised outside of school. So that is something that you as a family can can help your daughter with, as well as um, the staff here at, here at school. First of all, regards to organisation. Homework written in planners, timetables and homework to-do lists allow students to prioritise certain important events of that week, of that day, whatever it might be. Um, I would certainly recommend packing your bag, um, getting the school bag packed the night before, particularly if you're one of those students that um, has to travel in a long distance, therefore you might have a bit of an early start in the morning. And that is all to do with bringing the right equipment needed for the school day, being ready to learn when you arrive here at school. Setting up that routine, managing your time, makes everything a little bit less chaotic, a little bit more organised, and actually sets you in a good frame of mind to, to learn. Managing distractions is really important. First thing I'm sure, you know, I won't be the first, thing, the first person to say this, is put your phone away. And that, by that mean, I mean really away. So it's out of reach, it's out of sight, and you can't just lean over and grab it when you're doing your schoolwork. You can use your phone and screen time as a reward. Get your homework done, and then you ha can give yourself some time to your tablet or your phone or whatever it might be. Okay, but don't just have it there as an easy distraction and you won't be able to focus, okay? We don't allow you to have them in, in school and in class, okay? And that For that reason, get used to that habit whilst working away from school as well, all right? Be kind to yourself in that. When you are working at home, give yourself a break. If something is taking a little bit too long or a little bit longer than you'd hoped, stop, come back to it, okay? Don't stress yourself out about trying to get it all done there and then. If it is something that is taking far too long and actually you need to go to your teacher and say, actually, um, this piece of homework is taking me too long. How can I how can I make it better? How can I make it shorter? Why is it taking me so long? OK, those are the questions you need to be asking, not getting yourself into a worry about how long it's taking you. And similarly, my next point is don't worry about what other people are doing, what other students are saying. What, what, don't compare yourself to them, people. Okay, Everybody is on the same pathway to their GCSE results in year 11 and into the sixth form here in year 12 and 13. Okay, But everybody is doing that at their own individual speed. Okay, As long as you are working your hardest and doing as much as you can for you, all right, your outcomes will always be the best they can be for you, no matter what the person next to you is either saying or doing. 
okay so have that focus and that right mind about yourself and that is something i'd like to be encouraged at home as well all right we are not expecting everybody to understand everything straight away but don't give up okay there are people here at school that can ask that you can ask for help it might be your class teacher it might be one of your fellow students who are in the same class okay that may be able to understand it a little bit clearer than you and explain it a little bit better than you originally heard okay but everybody is needing help from with their learning from year seven all the way to year 13 lots of questions need to be asked okay and you certainly won't be the only one asking them all right last thing on there be flexible things won't always go right bounce back it's about how you choose to respond that's important We want our, to build our students as resilient and independent. And we want them to have an open mindset because they are more likely to embrace challenge rather than avoid it. They're going to persist in the face of setbacks and not give up, as I just mentioned on the previous slide. They're going to see effort as a path to success. Open-mindedness is going to allow students to learn from criticism rather than ignore the useful feedback and lastly find lessons and inspiration in the success of others this can be encouraged at home turn negatives into positives actively question your daughter about their learning and help them reflect on their learning whether it's a piece of homework you're discussing or just how they got on in their school day and of course praise thinking and the learning process all right at school, we firmly believe we have a duty to provide our students with opportunities develop, to develop that resilience and other life skills. Understand how to embrace change. Develop and involve social skills. Learn to network with other students. Exchange and develop new ideas and different approaches to problems. Learn how to contribute to build and being part of a successful team. This, again, as I mentioned before, is a reason why we mix up those, the students at the end of the year into different tutor groups. Okay, the, same happen, the same thing happens at the start of year 12. To build those social skills as well as academic skills we're trying to develop in the classroom. Our next slide is about the importance of reading. And I can't emphasise this enough. All examinations have a huge emphasis on reading comprehension. So therefore, reading at home, whether it be fiction or non-fiction, and being asked questions about what you are reading will really help your daughter develop their understanding further. Okay, The more students read, the better they achieve. To support this in school, every Wednesday we have um, Dear Time, Drop Everything and Read, where students will silently read their books. So please encourage and remind your daughter to bring um, her reading book in on a Wednesday. Um, for this year um, but I would also encourage them to have their reading book on them every day in their bag and have it as one of their staple um, pieces of equipment as well as the accelerated reader program and library lessons in conjunction uh, with the English department. One thing that we pride ourselves on here at CCHSG is our anti-bullying and e-safety policies. We continually promote these messages um, throughout our school life including through PSHE and assemblies. We promote our British values. We alert students to cyberbullying and e-safety um, issues along with social media issues. Okay, we, at the forefront of this is our personal safety, including dangers of exploitation and gangs. And also we can uh, have involvement with the police if and when necessary. Okay, while students are out of school, parents, you are responsible for your daughter's behaviour and safety and please keep the school informed if you have any further concerns regarding any of these issues although lots has changed this year in regards to covid and different policies and protocols that we've had to introduce here at school one thing that hasn't changed are our high expectations it says they're right place right time i'd like to also say right place right time all of the time year eight and that goes for the following points. Uniform, jewellery and makeup, organisation being fully prepared for lessons, student planner needs to be organised and up to date for you to able to meet deadlines. Our mobile phone policy has not changed. The same if you're signing in and out of school. 
we expect you all to be punctual, okay, and attendance to be high. And these messages, your teachers, myself, your form tutors will continuously um, be reminding you of and be expecting you to uphold throughout the whole time you're here at CCHSG. In the next three slides, I'd like to talk about attendance. The first thing I'd like to mention is, quite clearly and evidently, attendance supports achievement. And we are all committed to ensuring good attendance. The school expects students to attend every day the school is open. We monitor and review the attendance of all students constantly and will involve parents when attendance falls below expectations. Please note that schools cannot authorise any term time holidays. As I'm sure you can imagine, attendance does have some COVID-19 protocols. And those are as follows. First of all, just a reminder of the symptoms of high temperature, a new continuous cough, a loss or change of smell or taste. The students should remain at home for 10 days and book a test. If the test becomes negative, or returns negative I should say, they can return back to school. Absence for self-isolation under the NHS trace and test system, or due to other household members having coronavirus symptoms, will of course be authorised. Students should not come into school if they are feeling unwell. One thing I know that concerns our students greatly was, is when they're off school or missing school is about the work that they are missing um, on, on that day or, or those days. Firstly, I would like to say this. If a student is too poorly or unwell to attend school, their priority should be returned to full health and work missed can be completed upon the return to school. Obviously, if self-isolating then work can be accessed from home via SharePoint and teachers can be contacted directly via email to access work. But I'll always refer to my first point. If a student is off unwell and unable to uh, be in school for that reason, then they should concentrate on returning to health and rest and recuperate and not worry about work while they are off. And that can be caught up when returned to school um, and in better health. One of, if not the most important parts of my job is to support your daughter's well-being whilst being here at school. This is done in a number of different ways. One of those things is the PC programme, where it's an opportunity for students to discuss and talk about topics that they might be finding challenging, e either in school or outside of school. We have an expansive PE and fitness curriculum, okay, which brings added benefits to supporting physical and mental well-being. We have our Healthy Lifestyles programme. We encourage throughout to talk to others, whether, whether that be um, your daughter's friends, peer group, form tutor, teachers, head of year, pastoral assistant. We have our wellbeing ambassadors team. We have a student voice. We have a head girl team. So plenty of people for um, our students to talk to. We have our pastoral team, which I went through right back at the very start of this presentation. On top of that, we have our school nurse. We could also have, um, and very fortunately have, our very own school counsellor, which potentially could be um, made an appointment for by, for your daughter through re uh, a referral by myself. And if need be, we have access to external agencies if we feel the need to make a referral. But all in all, a well-rounded team and support network for your daughters whilst here at school. One topic regarding wellbeing I would just like to mention before this presentation ends and something that I see um, even more of in, in my role as head of year um, is stress and anxiety. And we talk about this a lot, um, whether it's in the media or whether it's here at school. Um, we're hearing about this a lot, especially with young people. Uh, it is more than 10% of 5 to 15 year olds are affected by emotional well-being or mental health issues and that is rising every day. Okay, Stress is our body's way of coping with the demands placed on us and that can be good and motivate us to achieve but also can be damaging and cause ill health 
if there are too many pressures at once. So we have to acknowledge the warning signs to be in control and develop coping strategies. And this is something that we can do here in school through that well-being support system I just discussed or that can be supported uh, at home amongst the family. One thing that I would always say and want to stress is that stress is a part of normal life. Okay, there's a saying that says that only growth and success can take place outside of our comfort zone. So being stressed or anxious for the upcoming test is normal for um, certain situations um, that potentially appear, um, for, you know, at the end of the year, for example, changing tutor groups for picking GCSE options. Being anxious or worried about those things is normal. But it's about how we deal with that and how we cope with that. And that allows us to be successful. But that potentially is going to take place outside of our comfort zone. So it's important to recognise that. If there's too much pressure placed upon us at one particular time, it can cause a number of different effects. Okay, We could feel anxious and panicky. Could start to have problems sleeping. Okay, Either sleeping too much or too little. We might feel exhausted and always tired. We potentially could um, develop some bad eating habits and we could overeat or even undereat. Poor concentration levels, either in the classroom, at school or at home. We might even find it difficult to actually make decisions and we start to overthink problems. Okay, And the last one on there it can affect our relationships with our friends or with our families or with our, our teachers and therefore affect how we socialise. And these are some very simple ways and practical ways that we can combat stress. And these can be done in school and at home. So first of all, your diet and nutrition, particularly breakfast, and particularly for those of you who have early mornings that you might have to travel um, a fair distance to get to school, make sure that you are have something to eat in your body and you're fueling your body ready to learn. It's not only for you fueling your body, body physically, but mentally as well. And that makes you a better learner, particularly in the mornings. Have a constant hydration. Okay, I expect everybody to be carrying water bottles and there are plenty of ways that you can fill your water bottle up at school in the day and keep your hydration levels topped up. Exercise is really important. It releases the positive endorphins, which is a chemical in your body which makes you feel better. Now, I'm not suggesting that everybody now goes out and buys a gym membership, but what I am suggesting is those small little things that we'd have probably done a lot of during lockdown, walking, being out in the garden, okay? Not necessarily becoming the next best um, netballer or footballer. I'm not talking necessarily in those terms, but just being outside, being physically active to release those positive endorphins. And we can all be doing that. Get into good sleeping habits, good bedtime routine, removing the bad habits. So removing screens an hour before you go to bed. So if your bedtime is at nine o'clock, by eight o'clock, your phone is off, your tablet is off. Okay, that allows your mind to reset, it allows your mind to recalm, it allows your heart rate to drop and be ready for a good night's sleep. And that's the same with if you're drinking sugary drinks or caffeine drinks, okay, remove remove those away. Lastly, as I said, in the with the pastoral team and that support uh, for well-being, talk to someone about how you're feeling and all those people there are there to for talk to but most importantly you have your family and you have your friends and you have your teachers here at school there's someone that you are talk to for all more information on those on stress and anxiety and sources of external support please see the practical stress busters handout if you do have some concerns about um, anything that i've just spoken about please feel free to um, email myself okay, or ring, ring the school to contact myself and I can discuss those things more with you. The last slide of the presentation is hopefully just a reminder about how to keep in contact with the school and how to receive messages from the school about updates uh, and, and certain things going on. We have our weekly bulletin, we have our newsletter, our website, which is being redesigned and revamped at the moment. You can email 
directly to either the office or your for your daughter's form tutor if you have any concerns or alternatively on top of that you can email me directly a reminder that any email addresses that you need to know are in the um are in the year eight information booklet you can also write a note in your daughter's planner if you need to let your form tutor know something or a particular teacher feel free to write a letter or telephone into the school and ask to for to be called back by by the member of staff you're requesting all right last thing i said in there and i've mentioned it before tell us about the any achievements that your daughter achieves outside of school with something that we want to celebrate and we want to hear about and something that we don't necessarily get to hear about too often unless it's done inside of school That does bring our virtual information evening to a close. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for listening um, to this presentation. Um, if anything that I've said is confusing or raises a few more questions or something that you'd like to further information on, as I've said before, please contact, um, please contact the school. My first advice would be to contact your daughter's form tutor initially. Um, if not, feel free to contact myself and we'll be more than happy to clarify anything that I've mentioned. Um, again, thank you for, thank you for listening and stay safe.